guys, so check out this cool new mini game I made. See, the goal is you gotta take this crystal and push it. Oh. Well, well, I just got my crystal stuck in a tree, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, oh, God. If only there was some way to check for the collision that would have occurred when that crystal jumped into that big tree. Well, there is. The Collision Checker Plugin, a plugin that allows you to check for collisions between events and players and other stuff like that. The way it works is pretty simple. Just go into any event and start a brand new conditional branch, then all the stuff you need to do is within the scripting section right here of the conditional branch. For example, something we could do is, is front clear inside this script right here and this will check to see if the front of this crystal depending on what direction it's looking in is clear if it is clear it'll do whatever inside of here so we could just like this is a text like that in fact to get a good understanding of where this event is looking let's quickly switch its image to something else like this slime right here now let's test it out when we talk to this slime from the side his front is going to be clear so we're going to see a text if we talk to him from the back his front will still be clear from the side his front is clear but when we block his path and remove the collision in front of him, he will not have any sort of dialogue to appear when we try to talk to him. And that's because when we did stand in front of him, his front was no longer clear, which meant he no longer used this text. Let's review all the available scripting little things I can do. To check a direction relative to where the event is looking, use the following commands. Is front clear, which checks whether this tile in front of the event is clear. Is back clear, which checks whether the tile behind the event is clear. Is left clear, which checks see if the tile to the left of where the event is looking is clear. And is right clear, which checks see whether the tile to the right of where the event is looking is clear. Keep in mind you gotta make sure all these are in these square brackets to represent there are just special codes within your scripting thing. On the other hand, if you wish to check a constant position such as north, south, east, or west, you can do so by doing is north clear, is south clear, is east clear, or is west clear, which are going to correspond to the north, south, east, and west positions of the event despite where it's looking. Using these collisions, you can create something like this. If the front is clear, take one step forward. Otherwise, turn 90 degrees left. And now whenever something blocks the slime's path, it's going to turn left. So we can stand, try and stand in front of it like this. Oh, oh, let's try and trap it. So we can go behind here. It's going to turn around. We can go over here. Try to trap it right here. Yeah, trapped. Oh, he's going down there. It's going to make another U-turn around and come back out. And we can maybe trap him right up. Oh, wait. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Here we go. There he goes back out. It's working great. However, while these conditions are currently working on the event it's currently stored in, you can also use it on external events or even the player. To do so, go right after the is and do something like is player front clear. And this will check the player's front, back, left, right, east, west, up, or down. Just like that. Alternatively, you can do event, open parenthesis, the ID of the event, then close parenthesis. And now this will check the front of event ID 2 on the current map. So if you want to check some external event, just input it right here. And once again, this is available for front, back, left, right, all the available checking conditions. Now going back to this crystal right here, let's say for example, we want to check a certain amount of tiles forward in a specific direction. So for example, one, two, three, four tiles before it makes a four tile jump in the east direction. Well, it's quite simple. Go into a conditional branch once again. So number one, conditional branch, create another conditional thing right here. So is east clear, but then at the very end, you can add at distance like this distance like that then four like that so what's it gonna do is now it's gonna check at a distance of four tiles ahead of it so it's gonna check in the east direction at four tiles if it is clear then i'll say dialogue such as this is clear four tiles to the east like that and then finally let's make a bunch of copies of these crystals see the different reactions now when we interact with these crystals let's say for example this first one right here it's not going to say anything when we interact with it because four tiles to the east of it is not clear with this one up oh, still not clear this one oh it's clear and this one up oh, it's clear also so that's good you can also have multiple checks within one single condition just like this so we can do is front clear like this then we can do and is front clear so is front clear at distance two like that and now check to make sure that if both the distance in front of it is clear along with the distance two tiles ahead of it it's clear and if it is we could have it move two tiles forward because both of the spots are clear so we'll make it move one step forward one step forward and also be sure to set it this to this event like that so let's try interacting with this cat right here. If we talk to it, it'll move two tiles forward. So let's talk to it again. Let's go again like this. And let's go again one more time like this. And then eventually it'll be brought to this spot. And the tile second in front of it is not clear. So when we talk to it, it won't move forward anymore. Alternatively, if the cat was right here, we could talk to it and move two tiles forward. But if we talk to it again, it won't move forward because the tile in front of it is not clear, even though the tile in front of it twice is clear. 
So as you can see, this AND condition makes it so both this condition and this condition must be both true. But if you want to make it so only one of them is true, you can just do OR like this, and either one of them has to be true. So now when we talk to this cat right here, it'll move two spaces forward because its face twice in front of it was clear. Talk to it again and move two spaces forward. But now if we talk to it, it won't move any more forward because both the space in front of it and the space two spots in front of it are not clear. And that's it for this plugin. While it may not seem super flashy, it can be extremely helpful when creating puzzles, complex cutscenes, or even AI controlled events. If you wish to download this plugin, you may wish to check the collision of the description of this video in order to see if it's there. Uh, no, uh, spoiler alert, it is. And, well, that's all for this video. Until next time, uh, yeah, check out this, uh, automatic maze NPC doer thing. They automatically go through the maze and find out the end. It's, it's pretty cool. They check to see if the front is clear. If it isn't, they turn left. And if the right is clear, they, uh, turn 90 degrees right and take one step forward. It, uh, it lets them, you know, it lets them move along their, like, I think that's, uh, right wall. It, yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome, I think. I guess. I don't know. It's a I made the maze way too big, though, so it's probably not gonna find the end anytime soon. But, um, I like to imagine that one day it will make it there. One day. One day. One day. Oh, gosh, no! Oh, I dropped the pop filter on the microphone. I guess that's a sign that this video is over. Bye!